Hey there again, Mark here from Wicked Awesome Food here on a beautiful fall day up here in the Boston area and it's a perfect day for me to show you this. A little smoky, a lot cheesy. They're ooey and gooey, meaty and crunchy and spicy and more. These are going to be the best nachos you've ever had and all that is hidden just inside that can. I just hope it stays together when I pull it off so stay tuned but no matter what though they're going to be wicked awesome. Trash can nachos. Invented by Guy Fieri's hair in Miami during the 2015 South Beach Wine and Food Festival, they are completely over the top and they are awesome. And let's get this out of the way immediately. In my version, I'm not actually using the trash can. Instead, I'm using this, a supersized version of pretty much any canned food you've ever seen at the grocery store. This one started out as a can of hominy at my local Walmart. It's 110 ounces and it cost me $4.48. You can use it for these nachos over and over, which makes it quite the economical kitchen investment. The beauty of this is you can use a can opener to open both sides. That way you can put this on your serving dish, fill it with all the goodness, and then slide it off. So we do have some prep work to do, but nothing too difficult. As crazy as this looks, it really is a simple recipe, something you should definitely try. Even better, once everything is prepped, it really does go together pretty quickly. You can even prep everything ahead of time, which is actually what I'm doing. And with the magic of editing, you might not even notice. Let's get to work. Bam, steak, skirt steak to be exact. This is about one pound. Let's dry this off with some paper towels to start. And then I'm gonna to toss this into a Ziploc bag. Largest one in creation, apparently. And into our Ziploc bag, we're going to add the juice of one lime, like this, one half, and the other half. Next up, three or four garlic cloves. Some kosher salt and pepper crushed red pepper, so for a little bit of heat, and finally some olive oil. I'm going to shoot in about a quarter cup or so. Close up our bag, try to get as much air out as possible, and then we're going to massage that in. Trying to make this awkward. Here we go. This is going to go in the fridge for at least an hour or two. Overnight's good, whatever you got. Next up is our pickled jalapenos. I have seven jalapenos here. We're simply going to cut the bottom off, and then we're going to cut these into rings approximately the size of every jalapeno you've ever eaten in your life. Now let's get our liquid ready. This is one cup of white vinegar, followed by one cup of water, one tablespoon kosher salt, two tablespoons of white sugar, a couple cloves of garlic that I'm just going to smash with the side of my knife. Now we're going to get this on the heat and bring it to a boil. And our mixture has come to a boil. While it was heating, I gave it a little whisk, add our jalapenos into the water, to the mixture I mean, they're all mixed. And we're going to let this hang out for about 10 minutes to cool off until we get it into our jar. Next up on our prep list is our pico de gallo. And that starts with one small white onion. I'm going to cut this lengthwise. This is the stem side of the onion. So next what I'd like to do is just chop a little bit of the end off. And that helps with peeling. Next up I'm going to make some slices. Not all the way through to the end. And try to make them nice and thin. Use that root end to hold it all together. And now we're going to try to do some vertical slices. We want this really thin, which is kind of tough. We'll just do our best. Now, slice down nice and thin again. And end up with a nice, finely diced onion. Next, just to be sure, I'm going to give this a little community dicing just by pivoting my knife on the tip. I think that looks like enough. Let's get this into our bowl. Now it's time to dice our jalapeno. We don't want the seeds for this, so I'm going to slice the top and bottom off. And then we're just going to slice straight down, which should get rid of most of the seeds. A few seeds make it in, it's not the end of the world. So, slice these long ways, nice and thin. Now I'm going to spin them, square them up, and make some more cuts. Nice and small. And again, let's give these a community chop. And into our bowl these go. And let's put in about a teaspoon of kosher salt. Give that a little mix. And let that hang out while we get our tomatoes growing. Time for our tomatoes. We only want the outsides of these, not the seeds or anything on the inside. So we're going to core these, similar to how we did the jalapenos. So that's going to look like cutting off the top and bottom. And then we're going to slice down to try to get just the core. And that's going to look like this. Same thing with the jalapeno. Thin slices this way. Spin them around. Line them up. Cut them the other way. Give these a bit of a community chop as well. And into the bowl.
Last but not least is our cilantro. I'm just going to chop a big chunk of this off and mince it down. And then into our bowl. Let's give this a stir to get everything mixed together. Looking good. And a quick taste to check our salt. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Mm. All right, this is going to hang out in the fridge overnight, which is only going to help these flavors come together even more. Next up is a super quick guacamole. Guacamole! <laughs> two soft, ripe avocados here. I'm going to use a dull knife all the way around, split them open, make some slices through, but not all the way through the end. And then you can simply go around and scoop it in. Nice and easy. To get the pit out, take a sharp knife, hit it, and give it a little twist. Comes right out. And same thing on this side. And repeat with the second avocado. Little seed on that one. Next up, we're going to dice up the other half of our onion. So same thing, some slits down the middle, nice and thin. And try to get one or two cuts this way, and then boop, 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 and into our bowl. Mix up a couple of minced garlic cloves, a little bit of kosher salt, and juice of one lime. I'm also going to put in a little bit of Tajin, which is a Mexican season. It's a mixture of peppers, lime, and salt. It's a really unique and good on so many things. I love it on scrambled eggs at breakfast, and it's f***ing awesome on cantaloupe. Trust me. And last but not least, a little bit of pepper, which is all blowing away anyway. Now we just mash this up. And that's it. Okay, quick taste for seasoning. Oh, it's so good. Man, I love Tajin. Mm. Okay, one more taste. Mm. Okay, time for our cheese sauce. And that starts with a couple of tablespoons of butter. And once that's melted, we're going to add a couple of tablespoons of flour. I'm going to whisk this till it's smooth. What we've made here is a basic roux, which is going to help thicken our cheese sauce. And now that our roux is nice and smooth and the small the raw flour is cooked away, we're going to add one cup of milk and one cup of heavy cream. Give this a nice whisk. And now we're going to bring this to a gentle boil. Our milk and cream mixture has come to a boil. Now it's time to add our cheese. So we have about two ounces each of some mild cheddar, some Monterey Jack. And I just cut this all up to make it a little bit easier to melt. Some Oaxaca cheese. And finally, some queso blanco. And we're just going to stir that until it all melts in that cheese sauce. And after a few minutes, our cheese is completely melted, and we have this wonderful cheese sauce. And also, my neighbor's landscapers have showed up. So we're going to finish this off with about a half teaspoon each of cumin and cayenne pepper. A few of our jalapenos we made earlier, along with a couple tablespoons of the juice. And finally, a couple tablespoons of our pico de gallo that we made. Give that a mix. And our cheese sauce is done. Time to grill our steaks. All I've done is take the steaks out of the marinade and pat it dry with some paper towels. My grill has been preheating on medium high, and it's time to cook. Don't worry about making this pretty, because we're going to cut it up into bite-sized pieces anyway. I'm shooting for about 130 degrees on this, which is medium rare. But remember, we're going to rest this, so carryover cooking will bring it to 135 or so. And then we're going to chop it up and cook it again a little bit. Anyway, let's cook this for three or four minutes per side. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Let's give this guy a little flip. Let it go another few minutes. Okay, it's been a few more minutes. Let's check our steak. Yeah, 135. That'll work. Let's get these off. Okay, the steak's rested, and I've chopped it up into little bite-sized pieces. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Oh, man. Lime, garlicky, a little bit of heat. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Okay, okay, the rest is for the nachos. I promise. Now the rest of the nachos. Okay, you made it this far. I'm proud of you. It's time to start on our chips. I have a baking sheet here with some parchment paper. The parchment paper is important, as you'll see later. I'm going to add about a half pound each of regular chips. And look, you want something with a little bit of mass to it. You don't want those super thin chips. They're not going to hold up as well. And some blue chips. I'm just going to kind of mix those up a little bit. Spread them out evenly on the sheet. Except I have a bag of shredded Mexican blend cheese. You can use pepper jack, whatever you can find. Spread this entire bag on these chips. And this is going to act kind of like a binder. Next up, some black beans. These are just black beans from a jar that I rinsed out. And we're just adding them on now. I don't know if I'm going to use a whole jar, but we're going to use a bunch. Next up is our cheese sauce. 
Take a few ladlefuls of this. I'm going to spread it all over. Probably about three. We don't want to cover them, but we want to make sure it's even. Yeah, maybe a little more over there. This looks good. I'm really getting excited now. And finally, we're going to get on our steak. Spread this out. All over. Yeah, these I'm going to eat. Oh, good. Mm. Okay, now we need to heat this whole thing up to melt that bag of cheese. You can toss these in your oven at 300 for seven to 10 minutes or so, but I'm gonna add a little smoke flavor to the party. I have my pellet smoker going on the extra smoke setting, which is around 180 degrees. I'm gonna toss these in there at 15 to 20 minutes, just enough time to warm everything up and get that cheese milk. And adding a little bit of smoke flavor is gonna be awesome. Okay, it's time to assemble. Let's make nachos! Nachos, nachos, nachos! And yeah, there was a lot of prep involved, but none of it was that hard, right? You can certainly make life easy on yourself and buy pico de gallo and pickled jalapenos, but there's something about making everything yourself that just makes you feel good, right? And fresh homemade is always going to be better than store-bought. You can do this, I promise. So we have our trash can here, and I'm using another baking sheet. I'm going to put the trash can down and I'll ladle one to two scoops into the bottom, just enough to cover, maybe one and a half. Yeah, maybe two. Next, we're gonna scoop about a quarter of our nachos into the bottom here. Pack them down a little bit, and we're gonna put on some jalapenos. And a scoop of our cheese sauce. Now we're gonna repeat that until our trash can is full. Layered, like nachos. Ooh, garlic. Okay, add in there. Some more jalapenos. Last little bit of our cheese sauce. Clean up a little bit. Top this with our pico de gallo. Fresh homemade pico de gallo. Make sure you're using a slotted spoon so all the liquid drips out. Down our fresh guacamole that we made. And some sour cream, because I like sour cream. They're your nachos, though. You do you. And finally, let's just do some garnish with a little bit of cilantro. And that's it. The only thing left to do is pull the trash can off. Okay, guys, moment of truth. Time to pull the trash can. Now, look, I have no idea what's going to happen when I pull this off. It may stand up for a bit. It may come crashing down. Last time I made them, they stood up for a while. It's coming down eventually as you eat it anyway. And no matter what, it's going to be wicked delicious. That said, I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. Here we go. I'm just going to gently lift the trash can. <laughs> oh, there it comes. Let's see if we can get a piece. Oh, peanuts are delicious. No, oh, it's coming down, guys. Nothing saving us now. Look at that bite. Oh no! Oh well. Well, look at that. There's the garlic. Did I eat this whole thing? Whole piece of garlic? Yeah. Oh my god. Mmm. Oh my god, that garlic's delicious. Pickled garlic, guys. Cheesy beans, guacamole, steak. Mmm. Oh my god. Look at that. Every piece has like 10 things on it. Mmm. <laughs> That's so good. I don't even know what to do next. Look at this. I'm making a mess. Oh my god. Mm. Guys, these are the best. <laughs> the nachos are amazing. Nachos. Ever. Oh my god. The cheese sauce is amazing. Steak is delicious. So limey. Garlicky. Nice little bit, bit of heat in here. Oh my god. I can't stop eating them. You ate a lot of the nachos. It's so good. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. My god. Look at that. I gotta stop. So there you have it. Wicked delicious, ooey, cheesy, gooey, meaty, smoky, everything. Trash can nacho. You whip this thing out in front of people, well, they are going to be super impressed. You have to try it. If you like this recipe, please help me out by hitting the like button. If you'd like to see more Wicked Awesome recipes, give that subscribe button a little boop. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.